Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this sound is a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. I find Aaron and Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Who is you? I'm Nero. And I'm Nyambi. And this is episode 379, y'all. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Mm-hmm. Happy March. Happy March. Where the hell Black History Month go that quick? Well, you know how you know how the year go. <laughs> January, February quick creep. But as soon as the month's up, we're gonna be like, Happy March. Happy <sighs> Memorial Day. It's Ooh, Christmas. Third then we gonna quarter. bust out Donny Hathaway. It's Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> First quarter is almost over with. It is over with. Yes. <laughs> Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating review on Apple Podcasts <laughs> and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. That's black with no K. What's going on, baby? Yeah, I'm gonna say we definitely know Q one over because I took smooth move. We talked about that last episode, now. <laughs> 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 you and the smooth as a moves. Smooth as a move, honey. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't have much. I had a really good weekend. I was telling Niram, it's lunch breaks. I feel like Sunday went by with the blink of an eye. But what we did do this weekend was watch a lot of good movies. And I'm so excited to talk to y'all about it. But first, what I want to talk about, y'all hear this professor at Columbia that be doing, I call him the heroin professor. The one who do that shit and study that shit. And really say the shit ain't that bad as they make the shit out to be. Mm-hmm. He a lie. So let me go ahead and tell the story. So a Columbia professor who uses heroin says that the drug helped him maintain a work-life balance and should be legal for everyone. Dr. Carl Hart says he first tried heroin about six or seven years ago. He knows that date. Anyway, at that time, he already was a tenure professor at Columbia University and well over 40, uh, according to his new book, which is Drug Use for Grownups. After doing that short, thin line with a friend, he said he felt a dreaming light sedation, sedation, free of stress. Dr. Hart, as I said, a psychology professor and neuroscience expert, has already worked legally with drugs, including marijuana, cocaine, heroin, for more than 25 years, studying the drug users and seeking um, to understand questions about the threats drugs pose to mental and physical health he goes on to quote my heroin use is recreational as my alcohol use Hart wrote in his book um, like vacation stats in the arts heroin is one of the tools that I use to maintain my work life balance oh. his book um, is a research scientist love letter to drugs <laughs> of all stripes in the argument for even uh for more even handed drug policies in the US. Oh. Hit the scheme. A scheme that Todd <laughs> set up for Listen. him to come. Listen, to when Nayavi first seen us, and I think he was on the Breakfast Club. Oh, he black. Duh. Why oh, you think I'm talking about it on Black Love Matters? I didn't know that man was black. Talking all this stuff. You... I knew Yes. What you think I Yes, he a black man saying this. Now, what I will say to give minimum benefit of the doubt, I think he's on to something when it comes to like the decriminalization of a lot of drugs. I think a lot of these drugs should not be criminalized. But if people are on them, instead of putting them in jail, giving them fines, they should be put in rehabilitation centers. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm definitely on board that. I think our government is way too heavy handed when it comes to drug use. And a lot of people slip and fall up into this and they don't know how to get out and they want to get out and they don't have the resources to to get out. And in exchange, they just destroy their whole lives. And that is not fair. Is it microdosing? Do it sound know. like he microdosing? I don't even know how Nero, you know, microdose with heroin. Does he sound like he microdosing? He said he's trying to use it for work life balance. Hell, I eat an edible once in a while for work life balance, but I don't it, know. Ed, uh, edible is not heroin. <laughs> See, the thing is, also the thing is for me, he rapping all the drugs in one for me. He dra- he rapping alcohol, tobacco, heroin, um, ketamine. Um, profile. He's wrapping them all in one for me, oh. and I'm gonna need him to categorize that. I'm gonna need some hierarchy because all drugs are not created equally. And although I do know alcohol is a drug, it's not the same as heroin. People have an easier time getting off alcohol than it is on heroin. To me, simply the Iambi facts, he feels like a high functioning um addict. <laughs> I almost said something else. He, he feels very high functioning to me because also the thing with drugs, which is why you know I do think it should be decriminalized. But another thing we don't necessarily want to push it too much is depending on each person, you're going to react very differently. Example: edibles. Some people can eat edibles like gummy bears and it does nothing for them. Some people can have a quarter of an edible and be ready to jump off the fucking ledge. So like, mm, sir, you talking about? 
he disagreed with the experts that drugs really don't change your brain. You must ain't seen, and I'll go to weed on this one. You can tell people who smoke a lot of weed. Okay, tell us more. That's all I'm going to tell you. Oh. But you can tell. Honestly, pull his picture up. Let me see what he looked like. Yeah, uh-huh. What you think about it? His pupils look a little dilated. In this it, it was so funny. <laughs> Charlamagne asked him, was he high at the Rebels Club? And he was like, ah, oh, man, I'm offended. I would never do you. Well, it was work-life balance shit. I don't know. Take the edge off. <sighs> How did he? Never mind. How did he? What? He went to IRB. <laughs> and IRB approved this shit? They've approved worse. I approved this bullshit. They've approved worse. That's my question. And it's the lumping. Do I believe Ooh. some drugs? Yes. Can that be brown used? though? Not the brown? Yeah. Like, do I believe some, some drugs like um like marijuana, even some like LSD type stuff? Like, yeah, I do believe it has a common effect. Like you said, in micro doses, it could be helpful. But I don't I'm not sure about heroin. I'm not sure about cocaine. We've seen that in Adderall, correct? But, well, Adderall is more like speed than cocaine, but yeah. Isn't speed a form of cocaine? Somewhat. <laughs> he seems like a high functioning junkie to me. But that's I don't I, I'm just I him. am so baffled about this shit. And y'all not gonna confuse change my mind on this one. Is he microdosing? <laughs> he ain't say, you know he's a scholar. If he was microdosing, he would have said explicitly oh, what he yeah, was doing. Yeah, he ain't microdosing shit. Cuz he would have said it. He hitting that shit. He hitting he that red. Hard. He is <laughs> it. Y'all hear it? <laughs> How he, what are you doing, Naomi? <laughs> <laughs> they can hear that. Oh, yes. yeah, they can hear that. He hitting that, hit. <laughs> he hit that shit. Yikes. He hit, he gotta be careful. He's oh still young. God. He his forty. I know he said he said well into his forties, but he young. A scheme. Let's see what his teeth look like in ten up. years. No, sir. You're not gonna do it for me. It looked like he got a little veneerage. <laughs> Neil, you got any thoughts? It scares me when um it scares me when um black men and black professors advocate for heroin. That brown. <laughs> You know, it's one thing to advocate for the sale of it, but it's another thing to advocate for the use of it recreationally. <laughs> yeah, I think he should just start with the decriminalization of it and focus on getting people better. But he hit us with the one, too, to so, say you two should take a hit. Did he not see the crack epidemic in the black community? The heroin. That heroin is something else, though. What'd you call it? Heroin. Yeah, how do old black people say it? The heroin. The heroin. They, that, say, it, they say it strange. Where when I was younger, I thought it was two different drugs. <laughs> that brown. Child, that that's what that Billy was doing too. Yeah, shout out to Billy Holiday. That brown, I can't even get it up. You can <laughs> Your computer said we don't do that here. But yeah, I call bluff on this. Something about this not sitting right with me. Mm -hmm. And I wish nothing negative on this man. But like, we need to watch out for him the next few years. So how do he present present prevent himself from overdosing and stuff like that? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's what he said. Read the book. Probably. I was thinking about getting the book, but I don't know if I want that in my Audible. <laughs> or in my house I'm high right now Talking this through this book Which, <laughs> He said don't insult him like that He know when to balance But he called it Who who published this Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Near him on his publishing kick Somebody I mean it's a whole He got 153 uh, Oh it's positive reviews It's a number one bestseller in social work and welfare Oh listen Nyambi, I know my opinion is unpopular most people is on his side. I, for a change, is actually more conservative. He got NPR, Wall Street Journal. Oh, a lot, uh, people are rocking with this shit, Nero. Interesting. I'm not. The only thing I'm rocking with is a decriminalization of it. But the 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 thought of telling people because this thing is he he um, aligns it with sex, right? He was like, gone are the days where we tell our kids to be abstinent. We don't tell them necessarily to be abstinent, but we tell them how to prepare themselves if they were to have sex. If you're going to have sex, this is how you have sex safely. These are the repercussions if you don't have sex safely. So he's saying doing the same thing for drugs. So well, let's do. I don't know. I might be on the wrong side of history for this one. I don't know. But my, my gut is telling me it's a no. Decriminalization. Yes. People should not go to drug, jail because they're doing drugs. They should get help. But encouraging them folks to take it and saying things like it's not as bad as it used to do be or it doesn't it is not harmful. You think like that's bullshit to me. So I'm on Amazon. Let's read a five star rate and review and oh. one star. 
Why are you doing this, Nero? Because, and maybe I should do a three star as well. Because, you know, three stars is It's really the truth. So, one star. So, which one you want to do? You do it. I'm not doing it. You want to do grown ups don't use drugs, a consequence of living in an ivory tower? Consequence of living in an ivory Yes, let's do consequence of living in an ivory tower. Yeah. Uh, This was published on February 19th. So, literally a few days ago. 2021. It says, with all due respect, Dr. Uh Hart. Whenever someone starts with something with all due respect, it means no respect (laughs) is to follow. Go ahead. Uh, Dr. Hart, how many opiate addiction people have you attempted to help uh, stay sober? Or are you in your position as an overpaid academic researcher? Academics so, don't get paid that much. So okay. detached from the experience of an average uh, citizen that you have no understanding of the plight of addiction, uh, addicted people who have lost the ability to control their lives. Yes. You seem to, what did I say? You seem uh detached from the experience you already read uh, that near i'm helpless lord you seem to question the disease i got this by- nyambi thank you mad at me. yes go ahead i hate when you jump in I'm come on to you seem to question the disease model of addiction though you appear to have little to no experience in the uh in the area of substance abuse treatment which no, is actually actually <laughs> a, career, a career for my own as a social worker uh, I have worked with many young and older adults who uh, desire to quit their use of opiates, but were are able to do so just because you are able to you to moderately use heroin <laughs> and amphetamines <Jeez. laughs> with uh, impunity s- certainly does not mean that individuals would be capable of using without the possibility of b- abuse and addiction. So uh, there be any government restrictions on behavior, uh, human behavior, when individuals are unable to moderate their behavior. If you believe there ought to be oversight on fossil fuel use or enforce, uh, enforce compulsory education, then it should seem that we um, believe in some government oversight on individuals. Um, mm. So that's that. You want to read a five star? Read. You can read a five star. <laughs> He good. Go ahead. <laughs> they said, I thought this was a decent read. Art argues um, that Americans' drug policy and largely a product of historical racism. It's, that's true. And some natural uh, aversion to happiness. Mm, as someone don't who, know about that. <laughs> in America, they, they like nice things. Go ahead. And, and as someone who grew up in a Protestant stronghold, I have no doubt that this aversion rests somewhere deep in Americans' Puritan upbringing. Hart deep uh, dives deep in the history of the crack epidemic and explains how black people and drugs have been accurately con- uh, conflated and demonized. An example, I, I, I personally I think I seen the crack. I seen it. <laughs> I seen it when I was growing up. What does he mean? Is confl- I don't know. Did you see the crackhead? I did. I lived next to a crack house. Yeah, I seen him. <clears throat> An example <laughs> I personally enjoyed was when Hart. Cites the micro uh or the elitist, what did I say, Psych- psychonaut community as a group which moralizes drug use and in- indigenous roundabout. Um, psychedelics are okay. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, uh, ultimately, uh, oh, ultimately Hart makes a strong moral and logical argument in favor for of using drugs responsibly for pleasure. While I, <laughs> while I do have some nuanced contentions with the position, I most mostly uh, agree with hearts and the book ultimately interesting makes me a uh, what's your thoughts uh, oh. let's see the the one the, the one three star review on amazon what they say why are you doing this? because Go i ahead. like to understand this because i'm 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 just afraid because when they start talking about them opiates it's highly addictive i'm about to say something else but go ahead <laughs> Oh, this is it has nothing to do with it because it's like disappointing. Good service from seller. Book is poorly written. However, Dr. Hart is actually no expert. <laughs> he got a PhD, don't he? <laughs> it just says overall disappointing. I might have to read it though. I might have to give him a chance. I might do like an audible and see what he's talking about. I think I'll be for the dec- I'm all for the policy portion of it. Um, I, I'm not sure I necessarily feel about the um recreational dr- use of some drugs. I think he need to be very clear on what drugs he's talking about. Well, evidently he's talking about that brown. Um, and that makes me a little nervous for it. 
It scares me. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I, and this, and the, but then they make me upset because they done basically, now I'm a conspiracy theorist. They, now they basically almost threw Dr. CB under the jail for having people eat sea moss. But this one's saying do heroin and it's okay? Y'all better stick to the alkaline vegetables and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking to the alkaline. I'm sticking to alkaline water, I think. I'm just going to stick to cake. What about okay. <laughs> The only drug that I can be addicted to is sugar. I agree. What I was about to say. Oh, speaking of, go get y'all checkups, y'all. I got my blood work done. I done got my pap smear. This is a friendly reminder. I know last year we weren't going nowhere. And it's time to go somewhere. And I know we say we're going to wait till these vaccinations come through. And hopefully we'll all be vaccinated by the end of the year. But that is not a reason to wait. Go get your checkup. I was blessed enough to go ahead and found me a black um, GYN. And I'm super happy. She knew to the area. And she was here only a month. But it was just such a nice experience. This is the first time I've had like a black um, OBGYN or um, GYN. And it was just such a pleasurable experience. Like it was just so relatable. And Go do it. I got my blood drawn. Any day, honestly, should be getting my results. You know, I'm transparent and upfront. So I'll let y'all know how I go. I got my fingers crossed that everything's in line. But if it ain't in line, now I have the beauty of knowing and all I got to do is change it and do better. But let me serve as a reminder. Go get your yearly checkup. Ladies, go get your pap smears, your mammograms. Men, if you're over a certain age, go get your prostate checked out. Make sure your teeth getting clean. All those things. It's time to do it. Okay. Hmm. How you feel about that, Nirm? I made you some appointments too. Yeah, I don't even know what's on your mom's calendar. I hope you sent me a calendar. You, you ready to get that blood drawn? No, not really. You know that's Nirm's favorite part. Here we go. Uh, that's the other thing. I can't even do. I can't even do intravenous drugs. I don't even like needles. I don't even know how motherfuckers do it. Nero, that's why you like edibles if it ain't no sweet gummy bear sugar. Exactly. You really just want the sugar of it. One time I did have one of those edibles we had, and I was like, oh, this is good. I don't even need the CBD. I just take more of these. <laughs> like, I just wanted the gummy bear. <laughs> Addiction. <laughs> Next, I know y'all keep wanting me to talk about Tiger Woods' accident, but I don't have nothing for it. I'm glad he's well, as well as he can be after mm-hmm. flipping his car. Um, yes, I know he's going to have to have some pins in them and all this stuff, but he's alive y'all. And <sighs> what else y'all want me to say? Yeah. Like, you know, they did, it wasn't no drug test. He wasn't in no, no alcohol. We all didn't know what that means. So he was distracted somehow. Mm-hmm. I guess the one public service announcement come out of this is don't drive distracted. Don't be on them phones. Don't be texting, but tiger going to be okay. He, they got him in that hospital. He rehabilitating. Hopefully he'll be able to walk again. He got, I'm sure great insurance and plenty of funds, but I'm more concerned about the vaccination. What? Yeah. Does that mean a thing? No, because the thing is, like, I don't know what else they what they want. I don't like, know why they doing this. To talk. Like, let him. He flipped this car. He flipped this car. Distracted driving, and people like you don't press charges against who? Uh, who? No one was hurt except him in his car. Like. So they said he could have just fell asleep. And if that's the case, could have fell case. asleep, could have been distracted. All those things could have mm-hmm. happened. And that could happen to anyone. Yeah. So that's it. Look, prayers to all parties involved. That is it. Um, then lastly, on Netflix, we watched something called Canine Intervention, which is Cali Canine. If y'all look at the folks out there with dogs, if y'all looking for something to watch and some entertaining, please go look at it. I think his name is Yaz. And he's actually a dog trainer out here in the Bay. And I think I'm not. I don't know. He black. I don't, he's a brown man. He's a black brown man with a black brown family. And he out here just training up German shepherds and shit. And he's basically like the uh, millennial version of what's his name? Caesar Milan. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember him, the dog whisper. He basically the millennial version in the California ver- version of the dog whisper. But I would say his flip side is too. And not only do he be getting them dogs in order with discipline, he be training dogs to be protect. What's it called? Protect. Attack dogs, guard dogs. Yeah, I, don't, I think attack dogs, not PC. But uh-huh. like the dogs where you say the name in Russian or German and they go start fucking you up and you mm-hmm. just say one word and they act like ain't shit happen. Yeah. He also trained dogs to be like that. I told them we should see if we can get Mabel trained like that. Mabel is not. What's she going to do? Lick somebody to death? She go for their ankles. They she neck. barely have jaw strength to pick up a big ball. It ain't about the jaw strength. Sometimes it's about the initial scare. No People want to know where that come from. <laughs> and we say the word. They be like, nine. <laughs> and then some dogs is no intense. If we say nine, then maybe lose her mind on somebody. <laughs> Fuck their ankles up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it. How would she do? She get down. She got bass in her bark. No, she don't. Yes, she do. Mabel does not have bass in her bark. She do. 
No, she don't. But I just like seeing another black brown man doing well with she his black, black brown family. <laughs> what? Black brown. I'm man. not sure what he identifies at, but he, he in the black brown spectrum. Mm-hmm. And his family in the black brown spectrum too. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy to see them doing well. Um, and you know, I'm a dog lover, so it's interesting. But some of y'all dog owner gets on my nerves. I don't know why sugar keep biting people. You can't have no dog be biting people. Did you see the German Shepherd who just, I never seen German Shepherd just climb on Clars. <laughs> he said he bad. Yeah, I ain't never seen that before either. That I was nigga, like, what's wrong with him? That dog was bad as hell. I was like, he, run. and then I'm thinking they done adopted him. I'm thinking he had a pass because we watched one episode. And it was a pit bull who got shot in his leg and lost it. He was a three-legged pit bull. Oh. So I can understand why he got trauma and shit and don't trust niggas and don't like being outside and don't like trash cans closing loud. But the German Shepherd, the one who was climbing on the cars, they had him since he was a puppy. I said, oh, he just bad as hell. He, he don't like trash cans doing what? Closing loud. You know, he don't like urgent noises. He like Mabel. He grew up with homeless people. And then somebody robbed the homeless and shot and killed the homeless person. Mm. And in the process of shooting and killing the homeless person, they done, the dog done got gat too. Mm. So I understand why he's scared. I understand why he'll fuck a nigga up. Don't you? Yeah. Should I fuck him up too? I get shot. I understood him. I had empathy. Uh huh. But that other bad German Shepherd ain't had no empathy for. Or that poodle they had. Oh, yeah. That poodle was bad as hell. Some of them dogs is bad, like y'all kids. Yes. You can just tell. And y'all the one who ain't providing. How y'all up raising these kids is how you up raising these dogs. <laughs> no. A scheme. <laughs> you can. You can t- you know, you ever seen people kid? Nah, look, nah, I know we don't got no kids, but I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> But I see how some of y'all be with y'all kids. And I'm like, oh, Lord. I know. Do you know what I'm talking about? From the Nanny Chronicles. You see how bad them kids were? But kids just bad. And the thing is, I'm not even saying, I'm not even talking about whooping ass, right? Like, if you if you decide to use spanking or corporal punishment, that you, honestly, I don't even think it's about that with kids. Like, some some of them Nanny Chronicles, if I just raise my voice, them kids got an order. Right. Like, you can tell them kids ain't never been told to sit their monkey ass down, right? I ain't say monkey, but, you know, I put some bass in my voice, like Mabel, and tell them I wasn't playing. And they just sat down. Oh, okay. You're not playing. But you could tell no one, they always doing that nice, sweet kid talk to them. Please, please. please. I said, sit down right now. I don't. Sit. Ooh, ooh, you ooh. okay? I guess, I guess the green architect ain't told want me you to, to say, be quiet. Don't want me to say what I was about to say. Child, listen, I just put, when I did all Nanny Crown, all I did was put some waste in my voice and gave them the look. I said, if you don't sit down now, don't you touch it. Or I clap my hand, scare them like Mabel. I don't know why people, parents be asking, uh, saying please and trying to bargain with these. I mean, kids. I think you can't have manners please. with your child, but I think when the when we hit level four, ain't no please. Tommy, can you please put that down? You say please and thank you at level one through three. Tommy, can you please put that down? Hey, Tommy, <laughs> you gotta snap him off. Tommy, can you please put that down? Hey, Tommy, Tommy, I said Tommy, please. Tommy, Tommy, if you don't sit the Did fuck down, down. <laughs> get your ass in that corner. Oh, okay, 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 okay. What day is? You, know, you gotta talk mean to them sometimes. Let me. I'm just playing. Y'all don't talk mean to your kids. Don't send me no emails. You can send us a voicemail though. Five zero eight seven eight four one 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 one. But you can tell the same thing with the dog. I was like, these dogs have never been told no in their life. Mm-hmm. Anywho, um, but that's just what my weekend was. What's going on with you now? I got Tommy. Sit your ass down. <laughs> you don't gotta. You don't gotta cuss at kids. You just gotta literally raise your voice slightly. Not even loudly, like just slightly, and go down an octave. No, what, this reminds me of a joke. What was that um, documentary you're watching? What's his name? Which one? The, of the comedian Patrice O'Neill. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we're going down that road. But we'll go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Y'all don't send me no feedback. I ain't looking for it. <laughs> sometimes you got to tell the kids to sit their monkey ass down, <laughs> and sometimes you got to tell them for the streets. Tell them. <laughs> go ahead. Who was my who was babysitting them kids? Candace. Candace, how you ha- how you how you handle them badass kids these days? Do you say please and thank you? Or do you uh who yell babysit? at them? What you mean they they babysit they babysitting or they got uh, yeah, real kids? I think I think Candace had um a, a a daycare or like a babysitting business. Oh, okay. If I remember well. Child, my aunt got a daycare. <laughs> She got a daycare probably oh, probably long as I've been living. So mm-hmm. she was been in the daycare business for like thirty plus years. Mm-hmm. And she can control at least twelve of them at once with a with just one snap of her fingers. Mm-hmm. When have you been over there when she's in full babysitter no, mode? I haven't. You've only been there with a couple kids there. Yes. Yeah. How was that experience? It just to be a bunch of them. 
Have you been over there when she has any of her kids? T T T T T. Oh, they love her though. They worship her. And all she does is like she keeps them in order. She's like she disciplines them. She does not play. Mm-hmm. She don't even really. She don't whoop them, right? But she disciplines them, and it's like they crave the discipline. It's like they love it. T T. Please, can I? Please, 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 please. Anyways. No, when they went over, that's what they was doing there. What did you see? What was your experience when you went over? I, I know over you, you didn't have a full house, but for the ones you seen, how I was just it? seen them fruit snacks. And I, I just remember going down to the basement that one time. Like, what the hell is all this little kid stuff? I was like, I thought your cousin was grown. She's like, no, she a daycare. I said, oh. Well, her mom does daycare. Mm-hmm. At home daycare. And she don't play. Like, she be yeah. having them kids doing lessons. It ain't the hood daycare where you just drop them off from the TV. My aunt be having them kids doing their lesson. They be doing their numbers. They be writing. They be reading books. They take naps. She had them go do the gym. She go have them exercise. Mm-hmm. What's up in the winter? She have them go out and go and run in circles. So they get. Just, let me not. Let me stop outing her. And my dad came over there. He's like, why they running in circles? Like they gotta get, these kids gotta she get said they got to get some exercise. They need to get outside for a little bit. It's winter, so they only going to be out here about 10 minutes. <laughs> and they love it. Tee, 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 I said, they just run in circles? She said, I tell them they ice skating. I'm <laughs> 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 like, what? Do they know what it means? No. Tee, tee. We go ice skate today? She said, yes, baby. Mm-mm-mm. Go ahead. All right, y'all. Are y'all sitting down? Yeah. I got a little bit of news to tell you. <sighs> you going to tell them? I thought we was going to wait. I got a little bit of news to tell y'all. Okay. Y'all sitting down. I got some good news. <laughs> <laughs> so I got some good news. I can't share necessarily right now, but if y'all been following the journey, you can probably guess what it is. Uh, but, you know, just keep sending those good thoughts. Keep uh, keep sending those prayers. You know, it, you know, it may be something about us. It may not. It, you know, just know some good news in the air. And, you know, if you was waiting on something, it's coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever y'all doing, keep doing. First of all, Nero, can you? T- I'm sorry for everyone's heart who was racing. Nero called and told family members the news we had to share. And everyone thought someone died. Like, what? Can we talk about that, Nero? Can you talk about your experience? Like that? I was like, don't, don't start with, can I tell you, can I share a little bit of news with you? <laughs> I said, don't do that with black people. Like, let them know in the first sentence if it's going to be good or bad. What? I don't be said, like, don't leave it neutral because immediately we go to guess who died. That's I equivalent was, to guess who died. I got a little bit of news to tell you. Is that, ain't that a negative reaction? Do y'all have a negative reaction? Everybody. Oh, damn. Near my heart then dropped. What? You, and then I told them, oh. What responses to people? Tell them all the things people said. <laughs> Call my best friend. Hey, I got a little bit of news to tell you. Damn. <laughs> What now? <laughs> what now? <laughs> the Todd said it. What? Start crying. Hit the crying with Nero. <laughs> I didn't even know. You know, I feel like people are preparing to cry. <laughs> what? What's going on? Oh. I said, no, I just got a little bit of news Ooh. to tell you. Fuck. <laughs> I'm like they, sitting down. It's like they're getting it out first. So uh, it won't affect them as much. Let me take an edible because I know this is going to mess me up for the whole day. Why are we programmed to receive trauma at any point? Called my mama and sister. Called them on three way. Hey, y'all sitting down? Yeah, oh. what's going on? I'm be your sister. I'm at work now. I'm at work. What's going on? Oh, I um, just know I'm at work. I got a little bit of news to tell you. Oh. Oh, what? Did, what you Hold on. Let me go in the bathroom. <laughs> 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 oh just in case I need to cut up. <laughs> Don't tell me yet. Just in case I need to cut up. Let me go in the bathroom. Maybe <laughs> we got to start just being prepared for good news. And then your mama. Uh, <laughs> hey, Niram got a bit, little bit of news to tell you. What? Oh shit! What the fuck? Oh, yeah, my mama just coming out the door cussing. Who the fuck? Uh, what? what? <laughs> yeah, who the fuck? What? <laughs> Coming out the door swinging. Jeez, Louise, man! But no, it's a, it's, it's positive. It's positive news. Can't it's very tell exciting. Right now, can't tell y'all right it's now. Yeah. But it's very positive and it's very exciting. Mm-hmm. And you know, new once, chapter. Yeah, it's, it's literally <laughs> and figuratively, it's just a new chapter in life, man. So um, it, it was just very interesting to like tell like the responses to, from people and just be like, hey, like I got some news to tell you, or I got a little bit of news, and motherfuckers be like, what? God. 
damn it. Like, damn, people don't even prepare for good news. People no don't more? prepare for no good news. You hear me? Nothing. Like, shit, somebody could be just telling you to sit down because they don't want you to jump for joy. Yeah. Shit. No, Maybe, look, are you sitting down? Shit. Yeah. So you, them, aw, she. Look, so you can tell the news so they can jump up. Woo, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but niggas, Y'all, black we got to work through that. What's we got to work through this because I made five phone calls on Friday. Was everyone like that? Everybody. Every single person was ready. Maybe not Nia. I can't remember. But how you know, Nia play it cool. Yeah. He probably was nervous look, inside. He just couldn't show it. Because I was like, Nia got a little you bit. You know, he a Capricorn. Look, what's going on, brother? <laughs> look, what's, what's going on? He done put up his bank account. Look. How much I got up? Look, I think that was the only, like, <laughs> neutral response. It's like, hey, brother, I got a little bit of news to tell you. What is Oh, what's going he on? He put his phone to get his bank app. Yeah. How much is it going to be? <laughs> what's going <I> on? <laughs> but everybody else. He was neutral, though. He was happy. He was neutral. Everybody else was like. <laughs> it's like, I didn't even tell y'all the news yet. We got to be like, do we be like I think I'm, I finally checked myself. And now everybody's like, guess what? I'm like, oh my God, what? I'm so excited. I think that's going to be my response. But these motherfuckers, I've never seen so many people. Was prepared like, for the prepared worst. Prepared for the worst. <sighs> to be black. To be black. To be black. Good Lord. Yes. So it's pretty exciting. Um, um, it's, it's, it's exciting. I, I look forward to telling you all and sharing uh, when I'm able to about this good news. But. You know, y'all got to keep going. Y'all got to keep following that path. Yes. And just know, since the good news is in the area, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes you just got to let people know that good news is in the area. In the neighborhood. The Lord is in the neighborhood passing out blessings. Mm-hmm. So if anybody else was looking to get a blessing or need a little bit more um, grace and provision, the Lord handed it out this week. Just know it's so in, keep on a, keep it's in the out. neighborhood. The Lord yeah. is in the neighborhood. He might come to your house next. So be mm-hmm. on the lookout. Exactly. <laughs> Mm. Uh, other than that, uh, I had one of those punk ass eye appointments like Naomi did. Neom love being like me. I, no, I don't actually. You love being like me. I don't. Okay. But I went had one of those punk ass eye uh, eye appointments because you know I, here comes Naomi ass. Now he goes me Naomi. I think something going on my eye. Psychosomatic. So you know, <laughs> go to the doctor. They they get the specialist. Some of the shit that Naomi was saying was okay, it was spot on, but some I of told it, you, some I of told it, you, Naomi be over exaggerating. What I over exaggerate on? <laughs> First of all, no. What was I spot on about? Auto mask. Those masks. <laughs> I told you. I got there. I had a mask on. They again, stop you at the door. And it's like here you go. Put this mask on top of this mask. Uh huh. The the eye drops. Yep. The ones that that I was like, ooh, my eyelids you are sleepy. heavy. Just go to sleep. Night night. When they put the probe in your eye, now I didn't go blind like now I'm be I said. Blind. Blind. <laughs> That's why I can't see, Lord. <laughs> but it was an interesting thing because no, it was I like think we got two different tests. I, the ultrasound is when I went blind, not when they were checking the pressure. Oh, I don't know if they did an ultrasound. I think they. Oh, did. you would know because you they go did. blind. They did. <laughs> <laughs> they did the pressure check. Yeah, and they stuck like a thermometer or something. Like it was like a ball. It, it looked like a ballpoint pen. Nigga, that's dangerous. My, uh, <laughs> How are you calm about that? I told you what near him. I was like, did they have to use the things to keep your eye open? And I was like, no, I just opened no, my own eye. I just opened my own eyes. I literally had my eyes closed and they opened your eyes. I was like, they are. I said, that's as much as they're opening. Um, it was good to know that the doctor was like, this is the most normal test I've seen all day. That's amazing. That's a blessing. I exam I've seen all day. So Them don't get gunshots or are born. Oh. Oh. There you go. I'm sorry, gunshots. On Don't bring no gunshots over here. That make me nervous. And you know, our folks, they be in deep work. You know, I, that's why I don't, sometimes I don't like to listen to Joe Bunn because he be letting them gunshots off and I be deep in work. And I have reactions back to when I was in Detroit. <laughs> I was down at the Bell Isle for the fireworks and them gunshots rang off. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. Let's stay on track, please. Oh, okay. Because I, I got a story, so let me finish this. Okay, part. go tell the story. Um, so he's like, yeah, this is more normal thing. But I, then I had to do... The test where they like inject like dye in your in your arm uh-huh. so they can look at the uh, veins in my eye. So that was that was relatively interesting. I think the aftermath because there's like your pee is going to be high 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 lighter yellow for the next couple of days. Uh-huh. It's like what? Uh-huh. I'm like oh okay like cool cool cool. And then get home an hour and I say oh fuck this is really like a fucking highlighter. You were scared and then I was like it's glowing. I said Nyambi come it's look it's at this shit. It glow in the dark. It glow in the dark. <laughs> Nyambi. This is some radiation type I shit right here. I said you want some smooth move. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, so yeah I had that going on so 
you know, look out for your boy. Keep me in prayers and things like that. So when it comes to that, what I was gonna say about Joe Button and Nyambi. One day we was listening to this podcast, and you know, <laughs> Nyambi, I'm driving. Nyambi in the passenger seat. Joe Button let off some guns, and he goes, Nyambi like duck it in the passenger seat. We were in the parking garage. <laughs> this was pre COVID, wasn't it? Yes. It scared me. <laughs> I said, Nyambi, why are you ducking? The gunshots were like, it was in the Joe car. Joe Button, these damn gunshots shot. got me all fucked up on it air. It scared me. It was like, pat, pat, pat. I was like, ooh. Bring me broke out in a nervous oh sweat. Oh, my God. I, I cannot be the only listener to the Joe Button podcast who ducked when they heard a gunshot. <laughs> I might send some feedback. What you going to say? <laughs> Can we slow down? Can we slow down? <laughs> Can we slow down on the gunshots for us cubicle warriors? Because his podcast, he be on for six hours. So you literally can listen to two Joe Bun podcasts and that's your full day of that's work. That's the whole work done. So like if you went deep meditation and prayer and you catch up on your email and it gets to the point where you don't even hear them anymore, right? They're literally in the background and mm-hmm. all of a sudden guns cut through. <laughs> you get scared. Bow. You think you at a, what's it called? When an um, armed person come in, you think you really at work. Oh, <laughs> An active shooter? Yes. God damn. Slow down, Joe. Anyways, you want to hop into some pillow talk? <laughs> Those gunshots never make you nervous. No. You've never heard anything in that podcast that you're like, what the hell is that? No, not no gunshots. Really? Mm-mm. Must be immune to it. Well. A scheme. <laughs> let's get into the movies that we watched this weekend, y'all. When I tell you they were so freaking good. They were so freaking good. Can we first start with the controversial I care a lot? My Lord, it's on Netflix. <sighs> so Netflix new movie starring Rosemond Pike. That's that girl who was on Gone Girl. That crazy white woman who was on Girl on Girl. She playing the same role. Mm. So Rosemond Pike, Peter Dink- Dinklage. What was his name on Game of Thrones? Oh, oh, Varys, I think. Yeah, Varys. He was the little person on mm. Game of Thrones. And then Diane Weist, I think her name is. And when you see her, you'll know her. She's one of them old school actresses. She's an older woman. She played My Life in Pieces. Listen, this movie was everything and nothing at the same time. Like, it, I hated it, but I couldn't look away. Mm. It was like, again, like I keep talking about the car crash metaphor where I kept looking at it. And Tyron Lannister. Who was that? Who was Darius? Oh yeah, Tyron. And I couldn't stop. I'm gonna warn you right now. This movie is going to be triggering for in so many ways. It's giving white woman scammer. Every time I seen that blonde, blonde Bob, I got mad. That Bob now. You know how we have the Karen. Mm-hmm. We now. I think what's her name in this movie? Marla. Yeah. Now we got the Marla, which is a white woman who's a scammer. Mm. And the Marla haircut, which is a nasty, blunt bob. So it is a mixture of like white woman being a scammer, underestimating women's playing into it, the power of c- capitalism. But the bit T is into this, right, was because every story is some fat to it. Is this idea of conservatorship and abuse of older adults and also folks with disabilities. So to give a summary without giving too much away from this movie is – this movie is basically based on this white woman, Rosemond Pike, a.k.a. Marla, who it has her own company that basically plays like guardian or gets mm-hmm. conservatorship over folks. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't do it. You know, some people come to folks and look for it and they kind of put their estate in order and they like they have conversations with people. It's not that way. It's the super toxic, predatory way of doing it. So... What this woman goes around and do is she's in bed with the nursing homes and different doctors. And the doctors then gives her heads up to be like, oh, I got this woman here. She rich as fuck. She don't got no family, no friends. And, but she got some signs of dementia or like mind things are happening. Is she all the way there? No. Nah. But I, as a doctor, I'm willing to go in and say on her behalf that she needs help. Right. Because as a doctor, you take the Hippocratic oath that you do no harm. So meaning if you see one of your patients that's ailing and don't have support, it's then your responsibility to go down to the court to say one of my patients needs support and they don't have anyone who's able to take over to them. And then that patient becomes a ward of the state. Mm -hmm. So like this is this whole scheme of like how to get people wards of the state, but not only that, the abuse that comes within that. So this woman not just getting these people and taking care of them, she getting these people who are rich, but low key don't need to be wardens of the state. No. And but the thing is, she's scamming them so deep. She's scamming them legally. Yes. Right. Because the doctor almost legally like the doctor lying. But who challenging a doctor? Right. You know what I'm saying? 
So the doctor's getting them on board. And then, like, she'll go through, show up at their house, be like, you're now, I'm now your guardian. It's best if you just leave. If you don't leave, the police going to take over you. You can go to court and ask for uh, whatever it's called, a, what's it called when you, objection or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. But you need to come with me. And she does that. And then what happens is the older people end up getting pissed off and rowdy, rowdy. And that does nothing but help. Her right. case to say then that they're unruly, they're not grounded in reality, and it just creates this vicious cycle. And what this story does is unpack that, and it gets a little deeper. What I will say is she fucks with the wrong one. <laughs> and then the story begins on the invincible white, um, the um, invincible white woman. Um, what is it? Tyron. He is a drug lord. She got his mama. When I just tell you, it was so good, it was bad. It's triggering. It's everything and nothing all at once. But I will say, watch it. This white like, woman is like Fetty Krueger. I literally could feel like I think that goes to our acting skills too, though. Like I literally could feel the blood boiling in me. Yes. And she was allegedly the underdog, and I was not rooting for her at all. Mm -mm. So it it has this like cool aesthetics, and it truly just revealed the loop ho ho holes that can be exploited in like. You, you see the scammers downfall allegedly mm -hmm. and it's really multiple movies in once right so this initial sequence shows like marla roseman like breaking down the scam right like when i tell you the her fake care and what's the person who be like she isaiah whitlock who the judge right and it shows like the lack of competency in these judges and how much the system just chews people out and spit them out y'all y'all it was a lot and i think it was, it was triggering. a lot it's triggering because i think f for most of us we've had family who went through like conservatorships and things of that sort yeah uh, i know when especially when like my father had uh, a couple strokes like a couple family members who were like doing him dirty and then like somebody from the state had to come and be a conservatorship and they was like charging him and like selling his assets and things of that sort and i was like oh like this is this is a little too raw um but yeah every time i seen that white lady on that on that screen i got mad I got real mad, and I was like, "This, this is some fuck shit." Oh. And she gonna catch the she gonna catch the wrong one at the right time. But then, you know, her her white privilege kept her ass afloat. Her white privilege in her playing damsel in distress, or in their head, assuming she's damsel in distress as a white woman, gave her the heads up mm -hmm. in the leg up in all these situations because they continuously underestimated this white yes. woman. Yes, because I was like, "Can't nobody just kill her? Why ain't nobody killed her?" It's like they they trying, right? But they're like, oh, this easy breezy. It's no problem, right? And then they go with their guard down, and then here come white woman. Oh, my God. It was like on some Liam Neeson type shit. She is absolutely the, the female version of Liam Neeson. But the conservative, I almost told Nir, I'm like, let's go ahead and make a baby real quick because this is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> because that's how they get you because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for people who are rich, has a lot of assets, but have no family. Yes. So then it's like, oh, no, no, I'm married. Yeah. Yep. Or no one's going to challenge or be checking up. Right? right. Because like say if that happened to someone or one of our parents, we're going to be like, hold the fuck up. Who, what, when, where, how? Right? right. Or if you get they have family, if they have a family full of fuck ups, that then makes the family doesn't seem capable. And so that makes a better case. But if you got family, that got their stuff in order. You're not going to run the okie doke. Mm -hmm. Chow. It was a lot in there. What else you thought? <sighs> She was a slick talking motherfucker. Oh, she was slicker than a just yeah, snake oil. Slick. She was slick. What a and nasty vibe. Talk fast. And every time you see And everybody that vibe, listen to snow. Slow. Watch it. And then the fact is like, you can't beat me. If you're going to beat me, beat me fair and square. I was like, what the hell? Bitch, you not fair. Exactly. This is a scheme. A scheme <laughs> that Todd set up. But what do you think about the elder abuse and the abuse of folks? With I think it's crazy. That's, and I think I think one of the things this movies did bring light to that is like, I hope it's bringing a part, bringing a light of this elder abuse and the, the abuse, abuse of conservatorship. You know, I think it goes back to that Britney Spears doc, that free, yeah. that free Britney, right? Where it's like, yeah, she may have had this, this issue, but like, she, so she can't have... Never be conservative or her own shit ever again. Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty much like I own you. Yes. Like I'm your legal guardian. When like I tell you, you this white woman walked in and started signing checks and started selling her house, like ain't shit. What like within hours? Mm -hmm. Blew my mind. Crazy. Watch it. Yeah. You're gonna be triggered though. It's gonna be a lot. So make sure you're in the right mind frame. But it's called I care a lot. Your mouth will be open. Mm -hmm. I think the most beautiful sequence is that first 30 minutes when you just see bitch when you see the bitch going to work. Yes. When you just see 
just playing stupid and stupid and in, in, in incompetent judicial system, like all the things mm-hmm. to the point where I was even rooting for the slimy lawyer. <laughs> yeah. When the lawyer was like, Oh, you got a cute scam going here. <laughs> said, I ain't trying to stop that. Look, but not... I need my person back. Right. He said, you got a scam here. Like he was even looking like everyone here is incompetent and that's how you're riding this way. Yeah. But that's how it is in family court, though. Like, Everyone here is incompetent. That's how you ride in a way. That's how the shit happens like, in family court. They do not court. know the law. Like, because it even blew my mind. I had to look it up. Like, people can have these emergency hearings for, um, um, what's it called, conservatorship, and not have that person present. Mm-hmm. That's madness. If you're saying this person's not capable, I need to see them. Right. Or we need to do an at-home visit. We need a video camera. We need FaceTime. So there's no way I can see this person and mm-hmm. just even ask them a fucking question? Right. That's, that's mad. Yeah. That is madness. It's fucking crazy. Even a woman was like, what? That's not right. That shouldn't be a law. So, mm, all this to say, get your house in order. Me and you are about to just have a baby. That's what just don't happen. <laughs> Changing the subject. Um, the state versus Philly holiday. So, it's called the state. It's called the United States versus United States of America versus Billy Holiday. Um, wrote the jazz legend in her 1956 autobiography. Um, and the reason it's called that because that's the way that it felt. Holiday's 1947 conviction when she was sentenced to a year and a day for possession of narcotics was just one chapter in a sustained campaign against the singers who performances um, at the different nightclubs with anti-lynching ballads, strained fruit, fruit had become a lightning rod for civil rights awareness and activism. So I watched it. What you thought, Nero? Strange fruit hanging. Oh, my goodness. Run a proper tree. Oh, oh, what version is that? Uh, that's the near version. <laughs> I don't know what key you was in. I don't know if you was saying a poem. <laughs> it, yeah, it could have been or spoken what? word. Or what? What you uh, thought about it? Well, what you thought? The movie. Start with the acting because it was good. The acting was great. All right, Audrey Day. She did deserve that. all of the flowers. Let's give her a hand. She- transformed into billy holiday like, from let's the voice of her hand claps the voice the mannerisms the singing she looked like billy she didn't even i don't even know what audrey day looked like as Aud- audrey, audrey i don't even know what she looked like anymore let me go see in my it. head she looked like that like is mm-hmm. she just billy holiday like i just don't even know what she looks like anymore because she played billy holiday so well she did so sis Honestly, she need to get in her acting bag and or because she, she she can sing her face off yeah. too. I don't know if that Broadway when it opens up, but she need to do it. She yeah, uh, that acting. Andre Day, aka Cassandra Monique Beatty, did fucking that with an S. She did it. Yeah. The acting, the performance was was riveting. Yes. Amazing. Looked at us like Dan. I look like Billie Holiday. Or even if like the, just the way she was moving. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, Billie Holiday has a very distinguished voice and um, or like very unique voice. And I think she even got that down better than I say Diana Ross. And you know, I love Lady Who Sings the Blues. I low key want them to remake Lady Who Sings the Blues. And let's go ahead and put her Audrey Day in it. Like, because I need all of Billie Holiday's story, not just this snapshot. So that was amazing. The plot line. What about wait before you go to the plot line? What about um Trevante Rose, who played Moonlight? Who was in Moonlight? He was member Jimmy Fletcher. He was the guy who yeah. he was the FBI agent. I thought he everyone acted Every, well. Like that's what I'm everyone saying. Everybody showed acted up. Everybody amazing. hates Chris was good. Mm-hmm. I forgot what the thicker black woman was. Everybody was serving. Yes, the acting was on point. I agree. Miss Lawrence. I agree. Everybody, the acting was, was amazing, yes. impeccable. Chef's yes. kiss. Yes. Now talk about the thing is okay. So for folks who don't know, this this is not the story of Billie Holiday. This is not her biopic, her entire life. This just focuses on that 1947 conviction, um, and how the FBI was following her, and also on I didn't know this relationship was real too. So they said speculative. This relationship that. Billy Holiday had with the black FBI agent that was researching her, right, and trying to find the things on her. Mm-hmm. And what happens when they turn to have something more romantic at the end? Because the first time he was um, involved in getting her locked up, but then after that, like he was sent to go like 
follow her and all those things and he never kind of like played into it anymore mm-hmm. and they like fell in love so the story was kind of based around that and i don't know what you th- go ahead Niram. i know what were you gonna say the storyline and the plot line it kind of fell flat for me it fell flat for me too and i know some people loved it it fell flat like, like i will watch it in the background i probably won't never watch it again I ain't gonna it's lie. not giving me the same feels as lady who sings the blues like Literally, as soon as it went off, I went to go watch Lady Who Sings the Blues because uh, I needed to yeah. be fed like that. They don't make biopics like they used to no more. It's not giving me Lady Who Sings the Blues. It's not giving me the Dorothy Dandridge story. And I know it's just, it's more of a memoir. It's like a portion of time. Exactly. But, but these actors were so good. We could have did so much the more. The acting was so good, but the story was just so, it was blah. For Billie Holiday, because Billie, Billie Holiday, Holiday got though. a hell of a life. Yeah. <laughs> Starting from childhood to her death, Billie Holiday was living life. But I, I don't know. It, it just didn't. It didn't. It didn't land well with me. I don't know what it is. It just didn't land. You know. All I can say is the storyline. You know, sometimes you know it's because uh, who do it? Big Daddy. What's his name? Big uh, Daddy. You put respect. Lee Daniels. Daniels. So you know, sometimes with his stuff, like it, it, it can be a hit or it can it can land flat. And for me, yeah. like this was, I don't know. It was just a little stale. Like I, I was expecting something else. I, I didn't feel the way I thought I was going to feel after watching it, right? Yeah. Like, good or bad. Like, I just left it like... Okay. Oh, okay. I felt like this whole movie could have been a 20-minute segment of her bigger movie. Yes. Does that make... Like, I feel like this movie could have been a segment of the broader picture yeah. of Billie Holiday in the impact and influence she had in the civil rights movement in jazz, right? Like she's literally the mother, like who birthed this genre of jazz music. And even if we're talking about, if we're going to go with her niggas and love interest, Billy kept a nigga on her arm. Mm -hmm. And we seen through the movie, she went through a couple of them, right? And that's what we're going to explore. Even her bisexual, like... It's, it's just like we just touched too little on it where I would love to go deeper. Or also maybe I'm getting tired of the trope of black people in the system. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like people turn in to, to be in turn cults. Like maybe I got enough of that at Judas and the Messiah. Maybe. I just maybe know I'm it just, just tired. It just left me like it didn't leave me with anything. But it wasn't the actor's fault. No. It wasn't the cinematography's no. fault. It was literally the story. It was literally the plot. Yeah. That just left me like, oh. And the reason I say that is that it was like Judas in the Back Messiah. Well, the first time I watched it, like I didn't touch my phone, and so I, I even I usually base it off of like how good a movie is based off like if I'm reaching for my phone, I might try if it's next it, yeah. to me, yeah. you know, throughout the story. So like Judas and Black Messiah did not reach my phone, was enthralled, you know, even with everything going on with Lakeith's character. Right, this movie here, it didn't land well with me. Yeah. And it just left me feeling like, oh, okay. But they acted well. They acted amazing. The performance was off the hook. Like all they did the best they could. Like should get some award for performing a horrible ass script. But (laughs) (laughs) but it it didn't land for me. It it didn't land for me. That's all I got. What you got? I'm scared to say it because I think I think I think Google. Did the people like it? What's the review? Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, fifty six. No. IMDb. Six point four out of ten. Letterbox was two point five out of five. Then do do this in Black Messiah because that's it's been a while since the act. Usually it's the opposite. Usually the story is good, but the acting's bad. Mm-hmm. The acting was chef kiss. Yep. See, <laughs> Judas and Black Messiah ninety six. Rotten Tomatoes. IMDb seven out of uh almost eight seven seven point seven out of ten. Metacritic eighty six percent. Google users, 87% of the users like this movie. Yeah. I don't know what it was about the Billy Holiday one. It it, 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 sh- it felt like it shrunk Billy. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what it is for me. It felt like it shrunk who she was and the impact that she had in the community. I can, I can roll with that. Maybe that's what it is. Because, again, again, I keep going back to Lady Who Sings the Blues. I think that's like a four-hour movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and literally... That was what year was the Lady Who Sings the Blues came out? Nineteen seventy two. I can watch Lady Who Sings the Blues right now, and my mouth would be open. What's the ratings on that one? You know, it's a classic. It's a classic. No, sixty seven. That's still higher. Rotten Tomato. Seven uh, ten. Google, Google, look at Googler. Google users. Ninety two. Ninety two percent like you. this movie. Told you. How long is it? Two and a half. Two hours and forty. No, two hours and thirty minutes. Yeah. 
lady who sings the blues. Like I would love for. The, I honestly wish they just remade that. Mm-hmm. If they would have just remade "Lady Who Sings the Blues," I think I would have been on board. Nirom is being messy because now they done brung up the respect movie. You know, it's two Aretha movies coming out that her family did not agree about. So it's about to be some bullshit this year, honey. Christ. So I think the first one with Jennifer Hudson in it, I think that one come out this upcoming Christmas. Mm-hmm. Damn, appreciate appreciate it. And then it's the one Cynthia Irvero. I think that's her name wrong. The one who played Harriet Tubman oh. in um, um, Color Purple. That one comes out in April. But that one's not going to the movie screens. That one's on National Geographic, where I'm still trying to. Pr- I didn't know oh. National Geographic do movies. It might be under Discovery. You know how? Oh, it okay, maybe it's under Discovery. But I keep saying like National Geographic or put in Aretha Bi- Bi- Oh, untitled. You don't put it in, honey. It's Aretha biopic, and it's like a three part series or something. No, it's like eight part. The one on National Geographic is like eight hours long. So we gonna see. Here I'm just typing National Geographic. So it's like Roots. Oh, it's called Genius. Aretha Frank. Aretha. So I'm assuming Genius is a, whatchamacallit, uh, a series that they have, and they unpack notable people. Mm. Are we still processing that Cynthia Revo is Aretha Franklin? Is, should I not bring that up? Okay, I won't. A scheme that I'm going to watch both. I'm going to watch both, but... Is we the voice, yes. Voice, yes, but looks? Energy? She got I hope she got some better acting classes. Well, she's a good actress. Mm-hmm. She's a very Broadway though. I she she serves Broadway. Can she give me Detroit Aretha Franklin flavor? She, she gives me Broadway. Yeah, she's gonna give Detroit. I don't know. We're gonna it, see. How's she gonna give Detroit, Did they got a preview for it? How's she gonna give C. L. Franklin daughter? <laughs> Don't do that. Do they got a preview for this? They do. Let's see what they saying. Or is it just gonna be music in the background? The the, the audience can hear it. Oh, the what you say? The, the listeners can hear it. No, I'm talking about for this preview. You know, sometimes when they do previews for us biopics, it just be the a, the singing, the music, and them playing. But it ain't no one really acting. We about to see. We about to see. We gonna we gonna watch it together. Those two y'all. minutes. Oh, we ain't gonna watch the whole thing. Okay, so she come on the stage. Oh. Oh. Oh, she can I'm writing a new song. It's gonna hit you hard. Okay. I thought you were Brian a man. Grazer, Ron Howard. It'll get under your skin, right down to the bone. Mm. But I I... It's gonna be a whole new vibe that brings people together. Maybe she got a little twang. I'm just a link in your chain. Well, you only got three chords. I will make them sound like a million bucks. Chain, chain, chain. We'll see. Chain, chain, chain. In recognition of all you've done, uh, the people of the world hereby crown you Queen of Soul. Uh-oh. Make sure the world only sees the Aretha Franklin you want them to. You're you going to remember her name, Aretha. She's too young to go out there. Uh. Uh. Oh, my God. I guess. It's easier for a woman to be the helpmate of a king Uh-oh. than it is for a man to be the helpmate of a queen. Oh, that's true. Don't let that queen thing go to your head. Oh, I'll let that queen thing go wherever I want Ooh, it. She popped, she booped him. What that's called? Smush. When she smushed him. Time to change it. Oh, is genius you know, another thing? I guess so. You got to disturb the peace when you can't get no peace. Eight, yeah. It's eight parts. They about to tell all of us. This is what oh, Courtney B. Manson missed. To do. Is it going to be C.L. Franklin? I hope not. Launch your power. Ooh, ooh. Oh. Are they about to put all the Rita Franklin? Oh my god. Well, I can tell by her hair. It's going to be uh, interesting. Yeah, it is going to be very, very interesting. I see why her family ain't wanted out. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't seen one far yet. We'll see. It come out Sunday, March 21st. Cool. It ain't a scheme. Set we'll let you know if it's a scheme after we watch it, though. I ain't gonna hold back. Usually, if I don't like something, I just won't talk about it. But I'm gonna talk about this one. Anything else about State versus Billy? Watch it. It's good. The acting's good. Big Daddy. I don't know if I like the story. Yeah. Is that enough? Yeah. I. It, it didn't sit right with me. Yeah. It didn't. It didn't leave me feeling anything. I just left being like, oh, okay, Naomi, turn on something else. Yeah. Versus being like, 
oh my god let, let's talk about this let's debrief yada 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 it yeah, didn't, it didn't leave me about. with anything it didn't leave me with like oh i want to go see what twitter is talking about any of that it I didn't move like, me to chorus i was like oh okay yeah and then the last thing we watched was the emmanuel which was the emmanuel nine doc which was you know highly emotional i think it's on stars so just as a reminder for folks on june 17 2015 um churchgoers were gunned down during their prayer prayer service in charleston south carolina after 21 year old white supremacists opened fire at the manual american methodist apostle church nine african americans um were killed leaving their families in a nation to grapple with the senseless act of um terror um is the documentary had intimate interviews with survivors and family members. Um, uh, Emmanuel, um, from the executive producers of uh, Stephen Curry, Viola Davis. Um, it just tells a story about justice, love, family, hate, healing. It was a lot to watch. Mm-hmm. It was highly emotional. Um, another watch I recommend. Yes. But it was it was a lot. It was a lot. Mm-hmm. Um. I think it was just very emotional just to rewatch that. We watched them tell the story, listening to it on nine one one on tape, listen, you know, watch the the um the famous footage of him going in there yeah. and then him coming back out. Like ain't nothing happening. You know, hear them hearing the stories, you know, them being like, Oh, we forgive you Ooh. and all this other stuff. It's just a lot. Mm-hmm. It left me with something. Yes. Or even that the power of that forgiveness. Like, I do believe in forgiveness. And I think you do forgiveness without re, re um, what's it called? Reconciliation. Mm-hmm. Reconciliation. But, whew, it was a lot. It was a fuck. I, I don't know if I could have been strong enough to forgive that quickly. No. Nope. Forgive, eventually, yes. But, but that not, quickly. Not right then and there. Wow. That, that was like, and, and I knew the story, but like seeing the people who did it. Say it out loud. Yes. I was like, wow, y'all, y'all different breed. Yeah. Y'all and, different cut from different cloth to me. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are God's. Y'all doing God's work. You know, and the fact that he's like, did I shoot you yet? No, I, you know, you didn't. Well, I'm going to leave you to uh, tell, tell the story. story. What the fuck? Jeez. What the fuck? Mm. Wasn't it a lot? It was a lot. Yeah. So that's another one I recommend folks watch again. Watch your emotional bandwidth, but it's something as a people we need to watch because we need to know our stories. Yeah, y'all might not be able to go after, go to work after that one. Yeah, like plan out on a day where you just with yourself or you're doing something you enjoy after. Don't go to work or like then don't immediately go to bed. You need a little space to think about it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Lastly, are we going to get into this decreased life expectancy now? I know you want to talk about it. What you got? Well, don't say it like that. No. It just hit me hard that they... They said this life expectancy is going down. Yeah. COVID. COVID took us out. It took us out. And it's, what are we going to do hard. about it? I hope everybody's drinking water. I hope people are getting exercise. And I hope you're eating vegetables and not eating too much cancerous stuff. Oh, my gosh. Or stuff that causes cancer. It's just, I just want to keep bringing it to folks' attention, right? And then I think about the folks who don't want to do the vaccination mm-hmm. and how this is then also going to lead to more deaths because- Black folks, we tend to be the ones who not wanting it, but we also mm-hmm. tend to be the folks who dying the most out of it. Like, yeah. what are going to be the long, like the implications of this is just <sighs> read the articles, y'all. Like, they got it from Our World Data that talks about um, the decreased life expectancy and like what folks are doing with their time. Like, it's just it, it, it shook me a little bit, mm-hmm. and I can't stop processing it. And Niram's like, get over yourself. No, I'm not getting. Well, let's talk about it. Okay, tell us more. I think that's that's all. The pandemic has decreased life expectancy in the U.S., especially for Black and uh, Latinx uh, Americans. In addition to the grief of losing nearly a half a million people who have died as a result of the government's mishandling of the pandemic, a new study reported on Thursday that life expectancy in the United States have failed, have also failed by a year during During the the first first half of 2020. It's intense. Um, I'm just trying to see. So, where's what's the age now? Seventy seven. Yeah. So, according to the life, uh, according to the report, life expectancy for the entire United States has failed to seventy seven point eight. Sheesh. That's the lowest it's been since two thousand six. So, the lowest it's been since two thousand six. And that's not even putting an asterisk on what that means for Black people. So, I'm assuming Black people. That's the your sixty. You're probably in your early seventies, late sixties. So that's I'm, young. So, I'm in my midlife right now. Yeah, that's what I said. That's young. Sheesh. Like, I read it and I wanted to cry. Yeah. 
Ooh, here you go. Life expectancy for black people falling three times as much as uh, as it did for white, white people. people, and twice as much for Hispanic, for Hispanic people. people. Like I don't, I don't have a solution. I wish I had a solution. That's why I'm bringing it to the community because I'm hurt by it. Mm-hmm. It's hard. It, it's a lot. And as I said, throughout the pandemic, COVID has hit the black and Latinx communities the hardest, which was the primary driver for the drop in life expectancy. Mm-hmm. To make matters more complicated, as the COVID-19 vaccine rollout started in early January, black people have received a vaccination at a dramatically lower rate than white people. Mm-hmm. This was mostly due to the distrust of America's notably racist medical system, which lacks accessibility um, to black communities and neighborhoods across the country. The racial disparities in deaths caused both directly by COVID and as a result of life, living life during the pandemic draws a clear line of a longstanding uh, systematic racism in healthcare, where some people believed in the early months of the pandemic that COVID affected everyone equally, that can be farther from the truth because black and brown communities carry a particularly heavy burden. Mm-hmm. It just was on my heart, and it just made me so sad. And, and truthfully, I, I, we, I, I can definitely see this, right? So, for example, even just bringing this back to us, like, you know, my mom is 75 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, she hasn't had the COVID test because she stays – any uh like a suburb or city outside of detroit proper so however detroit has this whole abundance of vaccinations and that's because a lot of black people have moved out of detroit proper into the suburbs and now there's a lot of white people there and they still have this whole abundance of vaccinations to the point where they like if you know anybody who has a who has a detroit address on a license like go with them to get his vaccine because detroit's doing um, if you live in Detroit, you get one plus you get an extra one. Yes. And that's how much Detroit has. But all the other folks in the surrounding communities aren't getting them. Right. It's crazy. It's crazy. So like I see it. And this is this is like this this is the scheme. Like it's a scheme. scheme because like Detroit was Chocolate City, right? And it's still mainly Chocolate City, but a lot of since the uh since the crash and Ford and GM going bankrupt and things of that sort, uh well not Ford, but like GM and, and Chrysler going bankrupt and Things of that sort and, and all the bailouts, like there's not as many black folks that it is in the city and the white folks are coming to regentrify the city. Uh-huh. So now where they like, oh, we're we going to help all these black folks. So we're going to uh, fill Detroit with all of these vaccines. The black folks is not really in Detroit no more. The, but, nor honestly, I think they don't trust it. Mm-hmm. I think black people aren't going. And I know that's an unpopular opinion, mm-hmm. but I think there's a lot of black people who are just aren't going because they necessarily don't believe it or they don't know how to access and do it, mm-hmm. which is also terrifying. Yeah. And it just hit to say, what is going to be the long term? What snowball are we creating that we can't even see? I think that's it. Like we're creating something that we can't even see yeah. right now. And as y'all know, Naya, I got some hesitation. I'm still got my eye out on it, but I'm going to get a vaccination. Like I'm going to get vaccinated. But I'm thinking about our elders. Yeah, I think our that. elders need to be vaccinated, y'all. Like I'm a firm stand. If you honestly, you over fifty and you black, you need to go ahead and get your ass in line and get this vaccination. Mm-hmm. Like that is what you need to do. I see folks fifty and below or childbearing age. You want to, you know, see a couple more results, some more time. That's different. But that ain't everybody. That's only what a quarter mm-hmm. of the black population. Everybody else need to be taking their ass down to get that vaccination. Facts. And and that's not happening. And that's real shit. It's not happening. And remember Hank Aaron? They're talking about Hank Aaron died. Now I ain't going to get it. Hank Aaron was 87. He lived longer and than And he died in his sleep. He lived longer than the uh, life expectancy. Come, well, hopefully we all do. I'm trying to live to the maximum age of what a human is supposed to live to. What is a maximum age? They say theoretically humans should, uh, should be able to live up to 120 years old. Whoa. Oh, you're trying to really be an OG. Yeah. What's the oldest living person now? Like 114? Uh, I think somebody like just that. passed. It's always anywhere between 105 and 114. Uh, but it just hurt. We'll link it. Y'all read it with your families. Maybe y'all can help us process it. Nayambi don't have any words of wisdom or anything right now. 117 and 41 days. All right. That's the oldest uh, human. Hu- yeah. In Japan. I know that's right. It just hurt me. And I felt an immediate... Um, stab in my stomach when I read it. In low key, I almost cried. Mm-hmm. Remember, I sent it to you, Nirum, and you was like, "What?" Yeah. I was like, "Do you see this? This is 
It's maddening. <sighs> we'll close this out, y'all. I guess I don't got nothing else. Submit your black love story <laughs> to blacklovematters.com. To leave a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email, blackloveMatters at gmail.com. That's black with no K. And to leave a comment about anything we talked about, head on over to that website. Uh, we got that SoundCloud and got that voicemail at 508-784-1111. Once again, that's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.